All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Hightower. I'm the Assistant Director at Nationally Competitive Scholarships here at UNG. Um, thank you all for coming uh, to the CLS info session. And for those of you who are watching it later, thank you for watching this. Uh, the Critical Language Scholarship is a scholarship that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, it's one that I never, I never was able to win because I never knew about it. So you all are already ahead of me um, when it comes to just knowing it exists. Now, what is it? Well, it's a summer study abroad program. It is fully funded um, and it is funded by the US government and it's for students in all fields of the critical languages. Um, and there are a lot of those critical languages. All right, there's a lot of them. All right, don't panic with the next slide. These are all the scholarship, these are all the, the languages that you could potentially, if you wanted to, apply to study um, through the CLS, through the Critical Language Scholarship. Some of them do not require experience, and you can see what they are um, in that kind of orange box. Some of them, like the ones that we teach here at UNG, um, they do require. Uh, most of them anyways, Persian is in the no experience required section, um, but most of them do require some level of study. Now, what this means for us at UNG, if you're in a linked class, then you're probably going to get this in one semester. If you're taking a non-linked class, like 1001 in the fall, then 1002 in the spring, together those make one year. So if you're doing Arabic, uh, Korean, Portuguese, or Russian, this would totally make you um, eligible for those. Um, for two years of study, basically you want to be entering the 3000 levels by the time you get there. And as long as you're entering them, that's what they care about. If for some reason you get there and it's like, man, your level's not what we thought it was, that's fine. They will put you in the level that is appropriate to you, one that will challenge you, but one will, that will not set you up for failure. So if for some reason you get there and there's you know, maybe you had a different vocabulary than everyone else. They will work with you and they are prepared to handle that. All right, they are prepared to handle that. So don't worry about it. Just as long as you have, you know, for Arabic, Korean, Portuguese, or Russian, as long as you've completed the uh, 1001, 1002 classes, and then for Chinese and Japanese, once you've completed 2001, 2002, you are good to go into um, those programs. So like I said, this is a fully funded experience and it funds all of these things. It'll give you airfare, any visa fees that you have to pay for, housing, of course, most of your meals, if not all of them, obviously your tuition, your classroom instruction, and then a whole lot of cultural programming and group trips. This is um, a very intensive experience when you're on the CLS, you sign a language pledge to only use that language, which really can be a little overwhelming, but it also forces you um, to learn that language and to feel more comfortable expressing yourself in that language, even if at the very beginning, you kind of have to express yourself as a toddler. Um, and then of course your credit will come back um, into UNG. Now how that works for your specific plan of study, we will work that out um, later with your professors and with you thinking about what you need, et cetera. Um, you also get an oral proficiency um, score that you can use as you apply for different jobs. So it is a really quite fully funded program. All right, you do exist within a cohort. You are with your people for eight or nine weeks, depending on what, which program you're in. Um, you have 20 hours of language classes every week. So about four hours a day or so. Um, and then you have a language partner. You usually have some sort of either homestay or you have kind of weekend experiences going to people's homes. Um, sometimes it is your language partner's home, sometimes not. Uh, to kind of get you uh, understanding and learning about what are the rhythms of daily life for people who live wherever you're going to study. You also will have things like movie nights, and if you've done SLI, the Summer Language Institute here at UNG, it's like that, but it's actually a little easier because you're in the country doing the things and living in that language all the time. 
and a little harder because you really can't hide. <laughs> they literally know where you live. Um, though I suppose that's true with SLI too. Um, this is designed to help you make significant language gains in a short period of time, all right? Um, it's the whole purpose of the program. And what's really awesome about CLS is that everyone who's on that program, everyone who gets a slot is, is committed to doing that. And so you're there with everyone who just wants to learn and they want to do this. It's super exciting. It's really energizing. There's a good energy within the cohort. Um, but again, with all cohorts, you all are going to be friends. You're going to hate each other. You're going to go back to being friends. And then you will miss each other dramatically when you all finish. And it will all be teary. It'll be wonderful. All right. It's an amazing program. And it is a very intensive one. Now, the benefits of it are many. All right. Obviously, you're going to make those gains that you want. But it can also help you as you start thinking through your career, as you start thinking through what are the skills you need, all right? Going abroad provides you with a lot of those soft skills, those flexible skills, the things that um, employers just, they say they want, but you as the employee, maybe you don't know how to articulate it. Going abroad helps you articulate it because you learn how to explain yourself, your experience, et cetera. Not only that, putting in these types of applications, such as the one for the CLS, helps you rethink, well, what could be my career? What might I want to do? A lot of us, when we study language, we think of kind of one career path, and that career path is the translator, right? I can be a translator, but there is so much more you can do with a language major, a minor, or just significant language experience, and CLS can help you think through that. It can also help you provide, help provide you with connections to other people who are equally as jazzed as you are about it and going through similar challenges when it comes to thinking through their futures. All right, not only that, you're going to be living in a community. Most of these programs are in communities. You're going to have language partners. Those language partners are pretty much on board with introducing you to their world, whatever that is whether that's their family, whether that's their friend group, um, just helping give you that, giving, giving you that window onto their experience and into what it's like to be from a different place on earth. And those relationships can really build. They build on each other. You might have one language partner, but suddenly you have their whole friend group too. And then you don't know where they're going. You don't know where they're um, where this, these relationships are going to, to lead you towards new and different career paths, new and different understandings of what you think is that sort of culture, right? Beliefs, practices, traditions, assumptions, motivations, and fears. These are things that you can really only grasp by having local connections. And those international relationships don't stop when you leave CLS. Oftentimes they continue well into your future, as well as into your friends' futures, all right? And not only that, you get to join those alumni, those people who have experienced this uh, very intensive um, uh, program with you, they might come back in your, in your career because you all are going to have similar uh, career goals. I didn't do the CLS. I did a different type of language program, but you'll never believe that my friend and I, we were on this program. And again, we were friends. We weren't, then we were. We kind of left with, oh my gosh, I'll miss you. Keep in touch. We didn't necessarily keep in touch. But you know what? Years later, like 15 years later, she and I happened to both be on a path to be college professors. We were graduate students at the time. We saw each other at a conference and was like, hey, I know you. Hey, I know you. What are you doing? Do you know what ended up? that we were quite literally doing almost the same thing. That's not what we were doing 15 years prior, but we're pretty much doing the same thing. We're researching similar things. We're interested in similar things. And now we have a whole future together as friends, as colleagues um, that we wouldn't have had if we hadn't gone abroad. I have other friends from that program who are now working in the State Department and who contacted me this summer and was like, hey, we have a, 
we have an opening for an intern. Do you have any students? And I was able to help a UNG student get that internship, all right? You never know who your friends are when you're on these types of programs. And CLS helps connect you not only to your cohort, but to a whole world of alumni that you can then draw on. People who maybe went year before or two years before, or maybe 10 years before, all right? So there are a lot of benefits to this program beyond your language gains that could very much be useful to you in your future. So what makes you eligible? Well, number one, you have to be a US citizen or a national. Either one will work and you have to be enrolled. The one exception is that you have to be enrolled at the time of application. So if you're graduating in December or maybe in May, you could still win a CLS post-graduation. You just wouldn't necessarily get the credit to transfer back to UNG, all right? And you have to be 18, all right? There are other programs if you're not 18 yet. All right, you do not only have to be a language major or minor, you just have to be studying a language or interested in that language and able to articulate where that language kind of fits in your future. So if you're a biology major, this could totally work if you wanna be involved in say international cooperation or research when it comes to biological things, right? Pandemics <laughs> is a great thing that comes to mind in 2021, all right? The other thing is that background doesn't matter, all right? Uh, CLS is committed to being diverse and to trying to create as diverse a cohort as possible. And that diversity is taken really broadly. And at UNG, simply by virtue of being here and going to our campuses, all five of them, we are in a regional university, we are in a rural place, we are in the American South, right? All of those things help you all look diverse to the selection committee because we don't see a lot of students from the American South, from rural universities, from regional universities applying for this, all right? Anything else you bring to the table is gonna be a bonus. So just by virtue of being here, you all are competitive for this. Does that mean you're going to get it automatically? No, we're gonna to have to work, but it means that you have a bit of a leg up from someone who's going to say UGA or even someone who's in say the Northeast, which is where a lot of people tend to come from. All right. Now, what do you have to do and how do we help to articulate that diversity? All right, this application has basically four components. All right, one is your unofficial transcripts. This could be just a PDF copy of your trans guide. One recommendation, you're gonna want one recommendation and I can send you the recommendation form to send to your recommender so that they know what, they, what we're looking for. And we'll talk more about that um, in a bit. There's also four short answer essays, which are 200 to 300 words, and then a personal statement that's about 500, all right? The deadline to apply is November 16th. We're starting early so that we can get through those essays and get you kind of slowly, slowly working on them rather than trying to rush at the very end, all right? If you try to rush it at the very end, it doesn't lead to very good outcomes. It doesn't lead to a very reflective application. We want you to have a good outcome. And so at NCS, we're trying to do what we can to help you, all right? Now, the next question is, okay, it's due November 16th. Now what, what do I do? Well, your recommender has a few more days to put in their recommendation. By late January, you'll know whether you're in the running for it or if you're not, and you're, you know, et cetera. And then by March, you'll know whether you've gotten it, whether you are a finalist, an awardee, all right? The programs will usually begin in June um, and they can go into August, et cetera. Now, they will take into account your, when we start, they will look at our start date at UNG to decide where to place you, um, to make sure that you're in a program that's not gonna have you kind of coming off a plane and coming into class in the fall, all right? They do take this into account as they're balancing out the different programs, all right? So the next question is, well, what do you do now? Number one, start that application on the CLS website. That's one way for me to track you if you're not necessarily talking to me or something like that. 
you should come talk to me. <laughs> All right, let's have a conversation. Let's think about where this fits in your world and in your future. And then you want to look out for the email that I'll be sending out probably tomorrow about the boot camps. Boot camps are those workshops that are going to help you break down the application that are going to help you ultimately um, kind of slowly, slowly go through the different things that the um, the application requires and that the evaluators are looking for. So with that, do we have any questions?